Hello! I'm so happy I got a hold of you! Welcome back to another exciting episode of Lucius Showcase. I am Lucius T, and welcome to the first week of Action Hero Month! And I'm stoked for this because I love me some action hero brawny beefy men. What, no cutaway? Come on, I thought this was getting like Family Guy. Anyways, you already know what it is. It is a title. Let's not waste any more time. Let's check it out. True Lies was one of my all-time favorite movies growing up. Even my dad liked it. The third pairing of James Cameron and Arnold Schwarzenegger was a blockbuster hit that was basically a James Bond film starring Arnold, and I loved it. I didn't even know they made a game based on the movie, though I likely would have avoided it seeing as how I got burned by a lot of movie tie-in games. Jaws, Jurassic Park, Judge Dredd. That's another video altogether. But anyways, I probably wouldn't have picked this up. However, a few years ago, I saw a video by SNES Drunk who said this game is actually a hidden gem. Now, besides the point that he calls himself SNES, I took the recommendation to heart, and I wanted to pick this game up, so I figured, let's pick this bad boy up. So let's dive in. There's a lot of games out there, some of which you've never even heard of. That's where I come in. I'm Lucius T. I've been playing games since the age of two. I have no life. This is Retroactive. True Lies is not quite a run and gun and not quite a brawler. It's a sort of hybrid. And ultra violent for an SNES game, which is a huge bonus. Great! You play as Arnold, who actually has a pretty decent sprite. You blast through 10 different missions broken down as stages some of which tie directly to the movie, while others are just sort of thrown in. The movie missions are a lot more fun in my opinion as they stay pretty faithful to the source material. Shootouts in the bathroom, escaping down the slopes, flying a friggin' Harrier. Sadly, they missed out on implementing horseback riding and the Jamie Lee Curtis striptease scene. Though, the game box does hilariously say all the action and none of the romance of the movie. Now, if you haven't seen the movie, the game will make no sense timeline-wise. Each mission starts with a digitized screenshot from the movie, but some are ridiculous, like bad guy looks at bomb. Now the terrorists have your family, but you've never even seen your family, or the kidnapping. But as a movie companion piece, it works. Sadly, if you're expecting certain scenes represented here, you're going to be disappointed. RIP, Bill Paxton. Remember when I said I was going to kill you? You know my cuffs? I picked them. Now, gameplay is a top-down, Zombies Ate My Neighbors perspective. You have a pistol with infinite ammo and a 15-shot clip. In each stage, you will also find a shotgun and an Uzi. There's even a flamethrower hidden in each stage that is amazingly fun to use. Get bonadated. You can fire and move in all eight directions. You can also lock in one of those directions and strafe. But getting into a diagonal, moving or shooting direction is easier said than done. Now finding the Uzi and shotgun is key as enemy difficulty ramps up the deeper in the game you go. You have green shirts that have limited AI and shoot pistols. They have little health and can be one-shotted with the shotgun. Maroon shirts will chase you and have twice the health as the green guys. Red shirts are very dangerous. Take that, Star Trek. Those that have machine guns can mow you down. It's best to blow them up with the grenades. And red shirts also can use a shotgun. This guy is a level 3 boss, but shows up as a normal mob in the later stages. Blue shirts shoot rockets. These guys suck. And purple shirts use grenade launchers. Maroon and green shirts can also use grenades. They are by far the most common enemy type. Now, the great thing is enemies will kill themselves with their own explosives. They also can kill civilians, which if you kill three civilians, it's game over, but the terrorists can kill as many as you want. So you don't have to save them, you just can't kill them. Now, suicide bombers also pop up and will explode, leaving a brutal rib corpse. And lastly, we have flamethrower guys. They don't move, so you can usually edge them with your guns, but careful, they will kill you very quickly. And luckily, this isn't a one-hit kill game. Harry has a health bar, and health refills are generously distributed throughout the stages. Now, you also get three lives, which don't refill between levels, and your weapons all disappear between stages. Got to love BS continuity. Now, there isn't a continue system, but there is a password system. But the password will spawn you with however many lives you had at the time. So I made it to level 6, doing it straight, as the game had several extra lives strewn throughout the stages, but I couldn't beat the docks on only one life. 
Re-entering the password was annoying, and this game is way too hard anyways. Enter the unlimited lives code. Remember when I said I beat this game the real way? I lied. Yep. I cheated to beat it, and I'm glad I did too. The back four stages are ridiculous. Now with a nice touch, the terrorist guy calls you a cheat every time you revive, replacing Tom Arnold's commentary, and the gameplay is pretty unfair anyways, so having unlimited lives made it more playable, but by no means any easier. Oh, it's like the Dark Souls of Arnold games. Oh well. Oh. I'll show you how dark my soul can get. Uh... No. Having unlimited lives, it let me enjoy all the game without the stress. The levels are very long, and even with the generous health refills and extra lives, you will find yourself praying the level will end before you run out of lives. I had this dread a lot in the subway level. Now, I got so good at the garden maze level, I could practically dive roll through it, and the boss was still impossible. Now, Arnold has a dive roll in his arsenal that looks badass. It becomes absolutely critical at avoiding bullets and enemies. I found myself dive rolling instead of fighting a lot at times. My biggest complaint in the game would be the repetition that sets in. Stages have unique goals, but never live up to the exciting opening stages. Walking amongst enemies, to escaping downhill, to seeing civilians and terrorists get blown up in the mall was hilarious. Come stage four, the levels become a maze fest. Literally, it's a hedge mage. Now, destroying crates and searching for keys is tedious rather than fun, but as far as movie tie-ins go, this game is a real blockbuster. Time for some Lucia's metrics. Game design. Feels rushed. The first stage is the most interesting, with walking around civilians and enemies without engaging them, being incognito. Now, killing civilians once again will cost you a life, which is annoying, but an interesting wrinkle that all but disappears after the third mission. It's as if they ran out of time, and instead of further implementing interesting choices and gameplay, they settled for random locales and hide-and-seek quests. The gameplay is fun, but soon becomes overwhelmingly difficult and not worth the pain. Boss fights especially. Playability. Dumb fun. It controls like the overhead levels in Super C with less precision. But killing enemies is never not enjoyable. Watching an enemy descend into a pool of blood is just as satisfying the first time as it is the 50th. It just doesn't have much else going for it, and its stiff feel, long levels, and lack of continues will keep some people from getting past the first game over. Cost of entry. Pricey for a tie-in. Copies go for about $30, so while this game is enjoyable and very much lives up to its hidden gem status, you can also get much better SNES games for the same price. But hey, it gives Maximum Carnage a run for its money as far as best LJN games go, and I will probably still pick this up again from time to time. Storytelling. Atrocious. Like I said, you better know the movie because this game has more jump cuts in it than a Philip DeFranco video. Big fan, by the way. Not that it matters, since I know the movie by heart, but I can't help thinking the game would be even better with things more faithful to the movie. That being said, killing random enemies at a car dealer wouldn't have made much sense, but having a mission at the Forbidden City did? Yeah. True Lies is the popcorn movie of video games. It's great fun for two hours, but doesn't hold up very well under scrutiny. There is a certain visceral joy in seeing all these people get blown up, but it's not going to win any best of awards. It truly is the Arnold acting of video games. Taking all that into account from the perspective of a binge playing game finisher, I give this my Lucius T recommendation of play it. And there you have it. That's it for this week, guys. Thank you for joining me. This is a solid play it. It's so frustrating to beat it. I was almost going to make this a cheat it and new thing just to cheat to play the game, but that essentially is playing it. So play the game, use the unlimited live codes, use the unlimited ammo, all the other stuff. Just have fun. It's just a dumb, stupid, fun game. And it is getting up there in price, so feel free to emulate it if you like, even though you know I don't do that. So let me know if you've ever played True Lies on the Super Nintendo, or let me know if you played the Genesis version. I know sometimes these games are different, but this one I think is pretty similar. And for next week, I hope you're looking forward to something that's in outer space and pretty scary. So yeah, that's what you got for this week, guys. As a reminder, I make a new video every Tuesday. And once again, it's been so nice getting a hold of you. Take care.